Hello everybody, um, I'm Andy Duncan from Duncan Models and today we're going to do a demo on white metal soldering and I'm going to show you my way of soldering white metal. Um, a lot of mystery about white metal but it's very very simple get the right equipment get yourself set up properly. So first of all what we'll do is we'll go through the tools and how you get yourself set up and what you actually need and then uh, we'll go through the actual process of soldering white metal. So to start with you need to get yourself onto a table um, and a piece of board don't use mother's table um, and you will need a soldering iron you will need some flux and you will need some solder now, the soldering iron's got to be in a decent, heavy soldering iron stand so that it's collectible. The soldering iron that I'm using is an Antex 18 watt soldering iron. And it's got the tip on it that it's supplied with. And I'm using that for all my white metal soldering. And the trick to this is keeping the tip clean, and we'll go through that in a minute. So that's the soldering iron, an 18 watt, plugged straight into the mains. You will need to get the bottle of water down there. You'll need to get a piece of sponge to go in the soldering stand, soldering iron stand, and you'll need some water to make the old sponge a bit wet. I'm just going to pour some water on the sponge. So that we've got a nice wet sponge. And all that does is clean the tip, basically. You can buy these things from the hardware stores. What mother uses to do the washing up, just cut a piece out, stick it in, job done. So that's the soldering iron and the solder stand, and now you'll need some flux. And the flux I'm using is a phosphoric acid based flux. It's basically a bottle of water with different ingredients in it, a wet agent and a detergent. And to transfer the flux to the job, I'll use a stick. It's basically a paintbrush with the end taken off or worn out. Some people use a brush but with a brush you've got a metal furrow and the bristle and the flux will actually attack that because it's got acid in it. So basically all you need is a stick. The solder is quite important because you need to have really good quality solder. Now solder for white metal comes in a stick like that and at the back of it if you look at it you can see that it's crystalline and it won't extrude into a wire like wire form solder and if you buy solder it should look like that in a stick if it's in a wire like that it will break up and it's probably been melted down and used before so shouldn't be too much of a problem when you buy decent solder. Other little items, um, this is a little tip tinner that you buy from Squires, Bobby Holidays, um, Eilings Emporium. They're very handy for cleaning the tip, getting the carbon off of the tip of your iron. Basically then you're ready to do some soldering. But as I said about the soldering iron, the tip has got to be kept really clean and shiny. Because if it carbon, if there's carbon on the tip, you won't be able to pick the solder up and it will reduce the heat between the iron and the job that you're doing. A damp sponge most of the time will just wipe it off so that it goes into a shiny tip. Okay? If it gets too bad, a tip timmer and just gently rub the tip in the tip tinner 
and it's got an abrasive in it which abrades the carbon. It's also got tin in it which puts tin back onto the tip. Damp sponge and you're back to a nice shiny tip. Okay? So with a nice shiny tip, if you melt some solder, the solder will tip, stick to the tip. And if it's like that, then you know that you're well away. If you've got carbon on the back of the thing, and you put the carbon into the solder, it won't pick the solder up. Yeah? If you've got a nice clean tip, it'll pick it up. So that's how you know that your tip is clean. The flux is what actually does the job for you. What happens is, you introduce the heat to the water, turns the water to steam which then evaporates, it creates a capillary action that pulls the solder into the join and forms the join so that you've then got one piece. So basic soldering is very very simple and what we'll try and do is show you some of the basics. So I'm going to move slightly sideways so you can see what I'm doing. flat piece. There's the flat piece. Dollop of flux on this on the stick. And the critical thing with this is if you can see it, the flux is stayed in a blob. It's not run everywhere. So the flux is staying where you want it to go. And it will actually follow the stick. But what it's doing at the moment is, is it's actually it's cleaning the surface of all the gunge that's on it. Now sometimes with a... I can't find my phone. Sometimes with white metal you get a little join because it's cast in two halves and you get a feed. You might need to just wipe it off so that it's flat. So that when you come to do a bit of soldering what I'm going to do is I'm going to put that in the flux and that's now got flux on it so it's now taken off any gunge that's left on there. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to make sure I've got a clean tip. I'm going to pick up some solder on my iron. I'm going to put that in there and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to drop that in the corner so that I just tack one piece to the other. You'll hear it hiss and you'll see the steam come out. The solder will be very, very shiny and then it will go matte. Once it's matte, it's solid. So here we go. There's the steam. Shiny, shiny, shiny. It's gone off. So we now know that it's so solid. And basically, we've now got it. And now's the time to have a look at it to make sure if you're putting a wagon together or if you're trying to put something together that's got to be square now's the time to check it to make sure you've got it in the right place you've got it the right way around and it's square always handy to have a small set square handy now plenty of flux because you can put plenty of flux on but a small amount of solder it's easy to add a bit of solder, but once you've got a lot on there, it's very difficult to get rid of. So now I'm happy that I've got it somewhere in the right place. I'm now going to run the solder along the joint. If you can see what I'm doing. I've now filled in the join. And you always solder on the inside so that you can see that that is the outside of what you're looking at. The solder join is on the inside and what you've done is on the outside. Mm. And that is basically <coughs> all there is 
to solder in white metal. 18 watt iron, nice clean shiny tip at all times in a decent stand, some decent flux on a stick and some good quality solder. And if you're going to put anything together, if you're going to put a wagon together as in this sort of thing, where you need to join sides and ends as in like so, then what you need to do is to get a side and an end and tack it so that you can get hold of it. Here's what I made earlier and what you would do is put the solder flux on the top, you'll take a dollop of solder on your iron and just drop it in the top corner like so. And that will then hold that in place. So that then you can make sure that you've got this the right way round and everything's looking how it should be. So you will end up with two sides of a wagon like so. And this one has been tacked and it's now been soldered in there. But when I've soldered it, I've put it on my board and I've used my set square to make sure that corner is square. And I've done the same with that side so that when you come to put the two together it should then lock into place. And then you can check it to see if you've got it square that way. And if you're quite happy with that then you can solder the other two corners and then you end up with this together as one piece because you've done your solder joins in here. Alright, that's to put a wagon together. Um, you can use that on anything from great big lumps like that, which is a wheelhouse of a ship. And if you're really clever and get used to it, you can solder things as fine as that. And that is a white metal kit that is soldered together. A radial drill. And the same with a little saw, a mechanical saw. A lot of people get worried about solder and they say that you can melt white metal quite easily. Yes, you can melt solder quite easily. If you've got a piece of white metal solder, a white metal kit, and you've got an iron on, something very fine, if you put it on there you'll see that it melts. But because because the solder and the flux does the job for you, I'm going to take a blob of flux and I'm going to just drop it on there. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take some white metal off the end of here and where that blob is I'm going to actually put the solder in the flux without actually touching the white metal and the flux will reach up and pull the solder off the iron that's quite a big blob it's shiny shiny now it's gone off matte so I now know that it's solid and it's now gone right through so we can now actually file that up and it's gone back to one piece and the reason that happens is because the flux has done the job for you the other thing that sometimes you happen you put your iron on and you're talking to somebody and you end up melting a hole and you think oh I've now got a hole so big dollop of flux
a nice big dollop of solder stay still and when it's shiny it's liquid when it goes matte it's back to solid and it's gone right the way through and you can file that back up again and the hole's gone <coughs> and that's showing you that the flux is doing the job because it's got a wetting agent that goes across the hole and when you come to doing very fine stuff if you've got a fireman shall we say and you've got a shovel and you want to put the fireman shovel in his hand same principle applies dollop of flux and this time you don't need so much solder as long as you've got some solder on the iron if you just drop it on where his hand is wait for it to go solid you've actually just caught the iron on the solder now so that that is now holding it in place so if we do the same with the other end plenty of flux a little drop of solder and I can put that over his hand and it looks as though he's actually holding the shovel And that is now one piece. Right? So you can solder very, very fine, and you can solder great big lumps. If you're doing something like a horse, here's one I made earlier. When you put two halves of a big lump together, plenty of flux, nice big dollop. Just drop it on the end there where the head's going to go so that it doesn't matter and you've now got it in place. If you go underneath and put some flux along the bottom join, another great dollop. You've now got it in both top and bottom. So now you can put your solder along his back, plenty of flux because you can always wash this off and the heat will evaporate most of it so you pick your solder up drop it somewhere on the join and just flow it along and it will follow the iron and that will fill in the join all the way along his back and you can do the same on the top and the bottom and then tack his head on and just do the same as you go around the join. And with a little file, file that up, no join left. And this is true of when you do um, wagging kits that have got angle plates. When you've got the solder in the join, if you put more in and more in so that it fills that join, you can actually file that. To a nice curve and the join completely disappears and looks like it's one plate so that also shows you what the flux is doing for you and you can solder as I said from very fine to big lumps to horses to all sorts of things okay a lot of people say soldering oh I'll melt it. Yes you will if you're using the wrong flux, the wrong solder and too hot an iron. Some people use very hot irons but I don't really agree with doing that because I use that. If you look at my iron you can see that it's melted where I've had it for so long it just sits in there quite happy. I've had that tip tinner probably three years and I'm still using it.
a bottle of flux like that should last you goodness knows how many kits because you're just using the amount that you need and basically that is all there is to soldering white metal the only other thing I can show you is a lot of people say how do you solder white metal to brass basically very simple now this is where you need to use a 145 solder wire with no flux in it and what you're going to do is convert the brass to a white metal kit if you rub the flux into the brass and basically what you're doing if you can see that you'll see that the brass has changed colour and what's happened is the flux has actually etched the brass surface and taken the gunge off of it so that when you come to put a white metal shall we say whatever on there if you're doing an axle box you can draw around it but you need to make sure that the solder is outside your casting so now you take some 145 solder because I've only got an 18 watt it might take a little while if you just rub it around you can see it's picking up on the brass where the flux was that's now gone off and now basically you've got a white metal kit so loads of flux now you go back to your white metal soldering system you've now put that in the flux cleaning your white metal casting take a clean tip pick up some solder and do exactly the same thing drop it in the corner but this time I'm putting the solder on the brass because the brass will now act as a soldering iron because it will get hot but I've only just touched that on there but already you can see that it's taken the solder into the join and once you've got that stage and you're quite happy with it put a little bit more flux on and then you can f go all the way around it but by putting the white metal on the brass next to it and then you can run it along wait for it to go matte so that it is now cast that's the inside and that's what you're seeing on the outside but when you're doing something like an axle box you might need to clean up around the outside area but if you've got it in the wrong place if you put the iron on the brass you'll see it will creep along and you just take the white metal off and then you can reposition it again now if you can see what's happened now there's two different colored solders one's light one's dark grey and what will happen is, if I put the soldering iron on it, the heat will creep along it, because the brass is getting hot, and you can see the solder is melting, And once you cool it down again it goes back to the same white metal solder and if you need to put something into brass which is quite fine and this is just a piece of normal white metal I can stand that in the brass drop that on the on the brass next to it have a look to see if it's gone all the way around 
that is now standing end on and probably what will happen is to show you the strength of good white metal the white metal is actually bent because it is now one piece And that basically is how you solder white metal to brass. And to be quite honest with you, if you can master that sort of technique, then you should be able to solder anything together. So if we just have a quick recap. 18 watt Antec soldering iron with the tip supplied, plugged straight into the mains, a good solid stand so they don't wander about everywhere. Bit of mother's washing up sponge, soaking wet. Make sure that the tip stays nice, bright and shiny. Most of the time you can carry on by just wiping it in wet sponge and it will go back to where you go. If you pick up solder on the iron, you're away. If it doesn't pick up solder, a little tip tenner could help. Just rub it in, abrade it, Wipe it in the sponge and away you go. Bottle of flux. I use liquid flux. There's all sorts of fluxes on the market but that's what I use. It's a water based flux so that most of it is evaporated and once it's gone, it's gone. This is a wagon that's probably been built three years. It's all been soldered on the inside. The brake gear the axle boxes are all soldered on the inside. The wagon is soldered in the corners and it's never been washed. And as you can see, it's still reasonably clean. None of this has been washed. Even this thing, if you look underneath, where all the chassis has been soldered together, it's all been put together underneath so you can't see it, so you see the outside of the vehicle. It's never been washed because the flux is evaporated with the heat. And the flux does the job for you. What it does is it evaporates the water. The etch from the acid cleans the surface. The capillary action pulls the solder in and creates the join. And it's very critical that you have good quality solder, which looks crystalline like that. And that's how it should come to you in a bar, something similar to that. Get yourself a board, somewhere to do the job. You might need different tools, self-closing solder, uh, um, ply, um, tweezers, a pair of tweezers for holding things, a square for making sure things are square, a file for filing things up. I use these blocks with pins in. If you need to solder against something, put the pins in it. You can push against that and it won't go that way and you can do your soldering. But once you've got the technique of it, most of the time you'll be holding it with your hands and it'll be down to the modeler to figure out how he's going to hold it without burning his fingers. But that basically is all there is to soldering white metal.